Hi everybody, Nick Smith here. Um, I've got um, a, a t I'm covering a topic that we have previously covered before. It was one of the first videos I ever did actually, um, and uh, the audio on it is is really really bad. So I thought I would take this opportunity to re-record it. Um, I'll leave the original video up, um, but um, hopefully this newer area. It's a slightly different project. Um, so, um, and this is a question that's actually come from a um, from a user. So, and and how we apply it. And it's basically this project is that there's a number of different areas that we have. We've got a junction here. We've got a, a service area with a perimeter road, and a whole bunch of different um, areas that you might want to consider the results for. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this existing project and I'm going to sort of hack it around a little bit and, and see if we can get it to work um, for this um, particular user and uh, we'll take it from there. So the problem that you will often experience is that you have a larger area and let's say we're doing this perimeter road as, as one grid. Um, and then we've got a series of areas inside that that we want to consider. Um, and what we would normally do is um, is use the different masking layers to to bring out the areas that we want to consider. Um, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off, and I'm going to be fairly ruth ruthless with this. Um, sorry about that, Kevin. Um, I'm just going to go through and delete all the masking that you've um, rather nicely added in. And um, I'm then going to try and remember all the bits that you've um, you've actually masked. So um, and we'll um, go through and delete all these various part pieces and a couple of areas at the bottom. So and then I'm going to set them up as as different grids. Okay, so we've taken the drawing back to the original um, layer, um, to the original calculation area, and I'm gonna. What I'm actually doing is I'm gonna go through and delete that grid. So we're gonna set up um, a um, a new calculation grid. Now, new grids always come into the bottom right-hand corner of the existing one, so that's coming down there, down here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up a calculation grid for this area here which I'm going to call um, fuel. Um, as you all know, I talk about this all of the time, um, the one and a half meter grid rule, um, so that you comply with the requirements of EM13201, but we also use these um, uh, calculation points to, to draw contours and things like that as well. And it's another habit that's worth getting into is, is looking at the color of the grids as well. Um, now, the majority of you will, will be familiar with using masking layer one. It's when areas that are blue are masked and areas that are white are available for um, inclusion in the quality figures in the top right hand corner. So, But we have other layers where you can invert layer one and layer two. You can um, apply it to layer two only and then we have grid specific masking. Now grid specific masking is used for vertical grids um, which I deal with in a separate um, separate video. So we'll go to masking layer 2. All of the points have now become available and then what we're going to do is we're going to um, mask out the area. Now what I quite often do in situations like this is I use one mask to cover a whole area that I might be using for a series of masks um, and um, so we've now excluded the area of interest there and we can then cut out the area that we actually want for the um, for the fuel station um, it was something like that um, now we've now got another area over here that we want to consider so I can use that existing grid and then duplicate that grid and move it across because it's already set up the way that we want it so I'm going to go into here um, this is the uh, the one that looks like two dice, and I'm going to duplicate that grid. So it offsets it very slightly to make it easier to um, to look at, and then we can we can move that grid to where we want. Um, I'm going to call that um, fuel two. I'm going to use a different colour. I'm going to use orange this time, um, and then again we can go back into the masking to so the extent of the grid, and we can cut out the area of interest. Um, 
perhaps it's that and something like that. Hope I'm doing the right areas. Um, so that's another area done. Um, we've got two or three other areas. We've got an area, um, a parking area here. We've got another area down the bottom here, another area over there. So I'm going to create a new grid. Um, again, go in and specify the area of interest. Um, perhaps something like that. I'm being really specific about the area here because it might not quite work in this way. Something like that. Okay. Um, again, change it to masking layer two. We do the one and a half meter thing with the grid. Um, let's go with 35 points. Nope. Let's go with 40. Okay. Again, change the grid color. Um, and then I'm going to cut out the area of interest. Um, so I'm just trying to consider what the area actually is. It's always the difficulty when you're working with other people's projects. to there and we'll just take that back and go to there and then right click to finish points results okay uniformity is a bit down on that so we need to look at that and then I've got another grid that we're going to have here now one of the things you, you may have noticed is that grid 5 and the one above it uh, fuel 2 um, both overlap but because the um, the areas are not cut out it doesn't that part of it doesn't particularly matter so um, I'm going to add another grid, um, new grid, that comes in the bottom right, and I'm going to just add that in something like that. Now, if I were to um, to go in and just stretch that grid to here and to here, again, we would have exactly the same problem, um, where we've got grids that overlap, We'd have that on masking layer two, and again we'd do the one and a half meter thing. Let's make that 75 by um, 75. That'll do. Again, let's change the grid color. We'll go with blue this time. So you can see this is already starting to um, cut into the the parking area that's up here, and we can sometimes fiddle around with. Um, calculation areas by twisting them and rotating them so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this grid I'm not sure this is actually going to work but um, you'll hopefully you'll see the point um, we can we can twist the grid around to try and make it fit to the area so that the two areas of interest that we're going to cut out don't overlap um, something like that Yeah, um, we'll go back to the masking, and then we can then cut out the um, the main car park. Something like that. And you can see that we've got the quality figures now, points, results. Perhaps just tidy those up a little bit. Yeah, it needs a little bit more work, does that? But um, the um, important part is that you understand the principles of what we're doing. So, as before, um, areas that are blue are masked out on all grids. Areas that are white are available for calculation grid one, masking layer one, um, provided they are within that grid. So obviously we've got white areas here and here which are not within grids and therefore they're not included for, for, for consideration. These points here will all be available on grid 2 so the white areas are now included in those quality figures up there. So if I go back to grid 1 now areas that are green are available on masking layer 1 and this grid is, is um, masking layer 1 but it is excluded for other, other it's masked on layer 2 um, areas that are yellow are available on masking layer 2 but not on masking layer 1. So um, 
and you can obviously fiddle around with it. I'm not entirely happy with this grid six. It's not quite working for me, isn't that? I, I'd probably do it very slightly differently, but um, I need to have a little think about how I would do that because the area down the bottom here you may want to do as another grid. Um, anyway, um, I hope you found this useful. If you have, if you could um, tip the like button that's below. Um, I've had a couple of people just lately who've have come up to me and said, yeah, yeah, I really like the videos and, and they've been really great. Yeah, if you hit the like button below, please, it helps with my um, the, the rankings within Google and also on YouTube. Um, so, um, so yeah, that would really be really great. And if you subscribe to the channel, you'll obviously get notifications of other videos as and when I do them. I take um, requests, so if there's a topic you want me to cover, um, either message me below, uh, message me through YouTube channel, drop me an email to support at nicksmithassociates.com, or you can tweet me, nicksmith1246, um, at Twitter. Um, if you have any questions, exactly the same areas, support at nicksmithassociates.com and we will, um, I'll try and deal with those as quickly as I can. Um, thank you very much for watching, I hope you found it useful and I'll catch you in the next video.